This video is going to focus on projects related to 3D printing. So kind of the why. First, we'll introduce that book again. There's a QR code. It goes in a little more detail than what we go through in the videos. So one of the projects we have is just a simple bag carrier. What you're seeing here is just us trying to solve some problems. You know, in, in this particular case, it is a real life problem. So what we've got here is we had a student that got tired of carrying grocery bags in and said, you know, how can I make fewer trips? So it's really that simple. So the idea came from Pinterest. There's the Pinterest picture in the yellow. And then there's his design. He made basically a series of J-hooks. Then he did test them. And he found out each textbook that we had laying around in the classroom was a pound. And he got it to hold about 13 pounds before we could hear the snapping and crackling and popping. It's pretty cool because the local news channels picked up every bit of that. We got into some prosthetic work. It was a really cool project. We had a person that didn't have part of his arm since birth. And what happened is the kids designed this arm for him. It was part of the Enable project, but they, they were able to 3D print and we were able to work with our local community college. So I'll hit the play button real quick. So a pretty cool little device. And we got a chance to start working with TPU filament. That's more of a flexible filament. We had a yo-yo get created. Now I wanna say this, uh, the yo-yo doesn't seem really that intense, but there's some backstory to this one. We had a student here who just uh, really did not like school. And this project really got him excited about school and seeing the kind of change that he could make if he just stuck with something. You know, this was a kid who would put his head down as soon as he walked in the room. Uh, you know, he kind of evolved himself through this project. It was it was quite an amazing transformation. If you want to hear more about that story, email me. I'll be glad to tell you that whole story. We got hydraulic arms. We started doing this. Uh, we have one student that was just terrified to use power tools. So I said, you know, why don't you take this and go find a way to make it 3D printable? So he came up with all the pieces, you know, he designed them all. At that time, we used Autodesk Inventor. He went over there and designed them all, and then we 3D printed every one of them. And you know, he made it work. His was just as good as, as the other ones that were produced out of wood. So it was really a great, great story. Then we got into some great materials comparisons. Back in the day, we used to do CO2 cars. You know, one of these is 3D printed, and one of these is made out of wood. We went over and we got the exact measurements, and then we 3D printed one, and then we compared them. And you know, the the other class, so this was two classes going at it. The other class had no idea that ours was 3D printed. They looked the same almost. Um, and of course, the 3D printed one was so much lighter. It was it was just an ugly ending to that race. But it was a really cool way show the impact of 3d printing especially with materials then we moved into some stencils this was one of the better projects as far as human centered because we had a kid because of his dexterity issues uh, one of our special ed students he had a lot of difficulty just writing anything but his name was a challenge as well so one of our students made this stencil and he was able to write that down and you should have seen the amazement he, he was so proud of himself for writing his name. Our engineering student basically after, after that came up with a series of stencils with letters and common words and common numbers. And it really helped both students evolve. We had a gear ratio. So you can see right in here, we have some 3D printed gears. We've got a worm and a wheel basically, a worm and a spur gear going there to power these solar cars. Prior to that, we really couldn't get much of anything going. So one of our female students went back there and she said, you know, I think there's got to be a way to gear that up. So she went back, she did all the research on gears and, and what gears would be most effective in the situation. And she came up with these designs and they worked, worked marvelously. Just a common one that we do from time to time is just a simple phone stand. You can see here, just making it simple keep things simple just two components that has to easily disassemble and in this case we really wanted a phone stand that did not require supports none of these parts required supports in fact that was one of the requirements we've also done some hydraulic work 
in this particular case, you're going to get a kind of a combination of power tools, wood, uh, and 3D printing, because one of our requirements for this was to have at least two 3D printable components. In fact, we actually had a couple that were entirely 3D printed. So it was a rather remarkable project to see how it turned out. One of the more popular projects we've done recently is, has been the puzzle tube. This one we put out on YouTube as we did it. And I tell you what, it we got a lot of positive feedback from it. A lot of people tried this project with a lot of great success. You know, this is one I saw on Thingiverse originally, but then I thought, you know, we can teach our kids how to create these as well. So you can see the QR code on the screen. That will actually take you to a YouTube video I created about how to create these puzzle tubes because they were kind of a challenge and, and having a kind of a guided video really did make a difference for us. We also created Arduino prototyping board. One of my big focuses here was that I wanted our kids to use projected geometry. So I gave them some of the parts. So if you look down there in the middle, you know, the bottom middle here, you're seeing some of these parts. And I basically found these step files and I gave those to the students and I said, all right, now that you have the files, I want you to design the board. And you can see the board they came up with over on the left. And you can see the constraints that were up there at the top. It turned out to be a really fantastic project because we are able to use those Arduino boards to help our students in the advanced classes kind of have all their components right there together and test things to make sure they're going to work. Again, you can see a QR code over there. That QR code will take you to a video 